As the villainous Loki threatens to destroy New York, one team dares to stand up against this unworldly foe. Bring on the Avengers! Hey, wait a minute. Who invited you? And who invited you? Hey? In fact, who invited you? You're not meant to be in this show. Ah, well, that's legendary in a nutshell. You get to combine all your favourite Marvel heroes against all sorts of villains like Magneto, Loki, uh, the Red Skull, that kind of thing, and basically set them all against each other in one great big deck building battle. It's a cool little game. I need to test it out a bit more though. I've only had one game of it so far, but it was enough to tempt me to buy it. And I've even got the expansions for this as well, which I'll do separate unboxing videos for, and also separate reviews during co-op month. But for now, this is legendary, so let's make a start before you hear me do any more really bad intros like that again. Okay, oh. And yes, I cut this in advance. I'm not stupid. I don't like shrink wrap any more than you do. Ah well, as you can see, it's a big enough box. You know, this thing will set you back a good 50 odd quid in the UK, assuming you can get hold of it. Not many retailers have got it at the moment. Um, I think somebody said there was a licensing issue around Europe, but I don't know much about that myself. I don't see why it would be such an issue. But if well, have a look on. Uh, where did I get this one from? I got it from uh, BP Games. They're relatively unheard of. And they don't have a Twitter account, to my knowledge, but they have some stock of this and the expansions as well. And I think they even do like a £5 off deal if you buy them in a the set. So that was quite handy. Um, other reputable suppliers like Games Quest and Games Law and Board Game City may stock it from time to time. But I believe at the current moment they're either out of stock or it wasn't cheap enough. But enough of that. Let's get in the box. Here we go. Here we go. Right, kick starting off with a smaller rule book than I was expecting. Considering, whoa, okay. Hopefully, you can sort of see this. There is a, uh, the text is not the largest in the world, but the uh, rule book looks alright. Nice and colourful. And this is unique artwork. They made it a point about this game that. When they did this, all the cards and all the rule books and that were going to have their own unique artwork. So they've done a good job with that. And to be honest, I would have been a bit miffed if they'd simply just copied comics. So, but, okay, smallish rule book. Doesn't look too complex, but I'll be doing a first playthrough at some point to find out more. All right, this looks like the board. Foldy. Here we go. There's more to it. Upside down. Okay, boy, go. Don't damage the board. Don't damage the board. Alright. Hopefully you can see this. Not too bad. I can only move the camera so much. But effectively, you've got the points where you put your shield and your mastermind deck, which is effectively the good guys and the bad guys. You have the HQ down here which is where the cards that you can buy for your decks because if you don't understand the deck building mechanic it's essentially that you start off with a set number of cards that are identical to everyone else and then throughout the game you purchase cards that go into your deck and cycle through and reshuffle back and forth in order to boost your deck for the long run and eventually win the game. So you'll have those cards along here. The squares above it, the city, we're seeing the bridge, streets, rooftops, bank and sewers is where the villains will effectively spawn and different locations have different effects and different schemes, which is essentially what the objective for the villain is, uh, will depend on which of those locations you're in. Uh, and over here we have the hero deck and the villain deck, so basically all the spare cards will go here. Now I'll see if I can get the top half of the board for you. Here we go. Sorry about the uh, light flares. I have to do this under my uh, light bulbs and it depends where I place the board. But here we've got the scheme decks and escaped villains. If villains escape, that's not a good thing. And this bit in the corner here is a setup reference so for effectively how many players defines how many villain groups you've got, henchmen groups, bystanders and heroes in general as well as the general setup for like how many agents, troopers, and etc. are on the board, which is quite handy. 
uh, KO. I'm not entirely certain what this bit's for, but I'm guessing it's to put uh, uh, heroes or villains that died, perhaps, at uh, points values. I'm not entirely sure, but it's obviously got some purpose. And over this side, you've got the bystanders deck and wounds, which are effectively a bit like the trash and trains and the victory point cards in Dominion. They are effectively things that clog up your deck. So the more wounds you've suffered, the worse your deck is. And over there, you've got turn order. So, in all in all, the board is pretty nice. It's relatively sturdy and it's quite colourful. Nothing fantastic, but it's functional. It does what it needs to do. And to be fair, the artwork on here is pretty nice. So, that's the board. Uh, bit of random foam, not sure why that was in there. Okay, you can never have too much foam, I guess. Now, the way this has been done is that the cards have dividers and they will slot into these little bits here so you can separate out the different heroes because each hero has its own deck of around 5 to 10 cards, I'm not entirely certain on the number, but effectively it's a bit like how the Pathfinder game separates all its cards out and how Smash Up separates all its cards out. It basically just has the slots for them. As for the cards themselves, they're all wrapped up in single decks themselves. Uh, for some reason, it's all Black Widow stuff on the front. But hopefully there's more cards than that around. Let's have a look at this one. Legendary. Oh, these must be the, ah, these must be the dividers. So, generic, legendary. They're pretty... um. Yeah, they're relatively finished cardboard, but they'll do the job for dividers. There's quite a lot here, though. But I guess this is preparing for the expansions, because you get a, by the time you've expanded this game, there's a lot of stuff in here, so I think I'm going to need every single one. They're just playing black on the other side, but they're just dividers, so presumably they will sit in here like so and separate out the cards. But that's going to be a lengthy time for me. And yes, I am going to sleeve this entire game, as well as the expansions, so God help me there. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the cards then. Uh, let's see if I can get one of these uh, bits unraveled. Give me one second. There we go. Come on. Come on. Hmm. Normally the shrink wrap is my arch nemesis on here. It seems to be this weird sticky tapey stuff. Come on. I will beat the... There we go, there we go. I am the victor. Aha! Victory is mine. Right. And here we go. Which name was Black Widow. So, Black Widow cards here. Uh, there's a Captain America one here. The only slight beef with the base game is that the artwork is the same on the cards for the different heroes. So, for example, you know, the Black Widow, you saw about six different cards there for Black Widow, and they still have the same picture. And to give you another um, feeling on that one, there we go, uh, Perfect Teamwork and Avengers Assemble. Both the same artwork. Now, in the expansions, they have changed this and made it a single picture for each single card um, after the fans of the game basically requested it. So, it's not all bad. So, at least it's only for the base game. But, here we go. Emma Frost, who I believe was one of the Frozen Girl out of X-Men. Uh, Gambit, who was one of my more favourite X-Men out of the group. I always liked his attitude and the fact that you could chuck around poker cards and do weird magic tricks and stuff. Sadly, not represented too well in the recent Wolverine movie, I have to say, but, oh well, you can't have them all. Hawkeye, yes, the guy who in Avengers Assemble basically makes you literally drool every time you see him take a shot. <laughs> He's that accurate. Hulk, yes, good old favourite. Nothing beats the Hulk. Growing anger, unstoppable Hulk. Uh, Iron Man. Now, when I first played this game, I almost broke the system, I think. I went for a combination of Iron Man, and if I can find her in here somewhere, uh, there's not link for it. Yeah, Rogue. I used Iron Man and Rogue. Now, just a slight little backstory. Iron Man's cards generally involve you drawing more cards. So, and if you combo them with others, you can end up with a lot more cards as a result. Rogue allows you to copy uh, cards 
from other decks as well as your own played cards. So basically I ended up with the massive card drawing engine. That meant I was drawing through half my deck in a round and also taking the top card off everybody else's deck and effectively using theirs as well. And when I was with players like Hulk and Deadpool and all that lot, they were some high power cards that were coming out. So basically I started off relatively weak and then proceeded to effectively steamroll Loki and everything that came by winning the game by a massive landslide. So it was quite hilarious, but <laughs> I don't know whether that was some combo that really shouldn't have been found, but hey, it worked for me. Keen Sense is Wolverine. So yeah, I mean, gen uh, here's the generic shield agent. So boo, we don't like, sh yeah, boring, 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 boring shield, boring shield. I've yet to watch the series, actually. I wouldn't mind some comments in the post below about how the S.H.I.E.L.D. series actually is. I haven't been able to watch it and I don't want to start until it comes out for rent and I can get it on Love Film or I can buy the Blu-ray or something and just watch the whole lot. But I've heard good things about it and, you know, I like the Marvel Universe, so I'm sure I'll like it. But it'll be interesting to hear from you guys. And here we've got some henchmen, uh, Doom Legion. I must admit, my knowledge on the Marvel Universe is not fantastic. You know, I grew up with Spider-Man cartoons. I watch all the films, so I love all the X-Men films, Iron Man, Hulk, Spider-Man, you know, Wolverine, the lot. But I was not much of a comic buff in my youth, so I wasn't entirely sure whether I'd recognise a lot of these. Uh, I know Sentinels, yes, I remember them. Oh, they look pretty cool, though. So, effectively, that's the style of cards, and all these other decks here are effectively the same sort of thing. It's just more cards. In terms of the card stock itself... See if the camera can see up nicely. You can see that. Mm, pretty good cardstock. But I can see that this would encounter a fair bit of wear and tear over time with the constant amount of shuffling you have to do in a deck builder game. So that's one of the reasons why I am sleeving these cards pronto so that I don't have this problem. But that's effectively all you get in the game in terms of bits and bobs. Uh, it's just a lot of cards that need sleeving um, all with a nice legendary symbol on the back. But the main high point of this is obviously you get the board, which looks really colourful, and you get the special sort of setup, which allows you to separate out decks. And I'm sure the rulebook will explain a bit more about that. But um, underneath this, there is nothing else. Yeah, this is the basic box. But it is quite a chunky box. The interesting thing that I would like to try, though, very, very quickly, um, if you would just bear with me one second... I'm going to conduct a little experiment. Now, I use these sleeves. There we go. Mayday Games. Green, standard, premium. These were the ones that I was told to get for the purposes of make, sleeving these cards. So I'm going to show you now whether they sleeve fine dimension-wise and how they fit in the box. I can only sort of do one card and sort of give it a rough estimate, but... Okay. All right, that sleeves... As you can see there's very little gap at all. That sleeves pretty well. Yep, okay, that's a result for a sleeve. And if I try and stick it in the box, unfortunately there isn't enough of a sort of means to tell whether it shuts with the box, but the cards themselves are actually lower, if you see what I mean. Um, maybe this will fit everything. Yeah, if I stick the card down, here we go it's actually shorter than the box insert, which means that they should fit in there fine and the lid should close once I've got all this card sleeved. But yes, I've got to sleeve all 500 of these cards. And then when I open the expansions up, I've got to sleeve another 500. Yes, that's a thousand cards worth of sleeving. Do you feel my pain now? I hope you do, because it's going to be a long night when I do that. But for now, that's essentially what you get in the Marvel Legendary box. There's more cards to be found in the expansions, but I'll get round to those in another video. It all looks pretty colourful, nice quality. Uh, I wouldn't say the components are, you know, shall we say, wowzers or anything like that. You know, the artwork is really good and it's really colourful, but, you know, it's nothing spectacular. We're not talking sort of repost reduction or uh, fancy fight game miniature styles here, but, you know, it's pretty good going. I don't know whether it necessarily warrants the uh, 50 quid price tag around here, 
just for a ton of cards. It does seem a little bit overpriced, but I'm expecting to have quite a lot of fun with this game, so I'm sure it's not going to be a problem. But there you go, that's my unboxing video for Marvel Legendary. Thank you for playing games, and I'll catch you soon.